career and when you talk as much as he did then when things go wrong you're going to get it and he did get it people were happy to give it to him in, in the wake of defeats but that was that was good stuff yeah and you can tell that he's he's evolved over the last two or three years as he's been on this journey because although he's you know a lot older than Anthony he's about my age I think he's a much more kind of experienced in life in in top level boxing they would they've always been doing it together haven't they yeah I mean what, what he said was that Anthony Yard is his hero and that he's learned so much from it and I, I visibly saw him choke up a little bit when he said it and Anthony I, like, looked over to him it, it was quite a moment I, I've enjoyed this muted version of Tunde Jai I, it's probably not getting the views that, that it used to you know the braggadocious like we'd beat Andre Ward or all, all of this kind of stuff <laughs> no probably not many but... years ago but I like it and it's that that energy that knowing energy are you feeling that from them yeah I think mentally they're in a really good place he's he's very composed and calm Anthony that, that's something that's always been really impressive about him and they really feel that they're they're ready and that they've got a good chance in this fight and you have to give him a chance in in this fight logic dictates that the Turbiev is a heavy favorite yeah. and it would be silly to to say anything else but he does have a chance people always talk about a puncher's chance but I always think that's a bit disrespectful to suggest that that's all that somebody's got. Exactly. Because if you get to this level, you, you, you have to have more than that. Yeah. He's got some ring intelligence. He does learn quickly. He's got some minerals. He won't panic. You know, he, he's got, he has a chance in this fight. What would help would be if tomorrow night was the night where for the first time Arthur looks 38. Yeah. He hasn't looked 38 yet, but it's coming. At some point, it'll happen. At it's, some point, you'll get in there and you'll just be missing a step. It, it is inevitable. You can't go through 300 odd amateur fights. You can't be 38 years of age. Go through all the training camps as well. People so, forget about that. Yeah, exactly, You're exactly, whipping yeah. yourself into shape. Do you, tell me this. Do you think weight, do you, do you think he might struggle to make the weight? Because I've seen him in the Marcus Brown fight. This is Paterbiev I'm talking about. He missed weight the first time, and he had two hours to make it, and then he came back. Him being away from home, in a new country, having to adjust, do you think that could affect his weight-making process? Well, it's possible, and you would know better than me, but they, I think they came over here quite late, didn't they? When did they fly Last over? Last Friday. Last Friday. Okay, well, that's, that's, that's okay. That's okay. You've got days. seven, eight days. That's what you would expect, because, you know, the flying and all of that, that could, that could hold on to weight. Travel weight is a thing. Yeah. But that's obviously long enough to get rid of that. They're too experienced to fall into that kind of trap. But if you're tight, then you're tight. Yeah. And the older you get, the harder it gets to get rid of that last bit. I do expect him to make it. I'd be shocked if he doesn't make it. When you stand next to him, he's surprisingly, he's surprisingly small. Do you think so? Small? Well, yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, everyone's massive to me, mate. I'm looking at yeah. oh, Arthur. Yeah, he's getting <laughs> I mean, there's, yeah. no, there's no doubt he's really powerful, yeah. but... I mean, he's got. He's obviously very dense, isn't he? Yes, in terms dense. of his, in terms of his physique, and we all know how hard he can, how hard he can hit. But Yard will be in spectacular shape. He always is, and I'm looking forward to seeing the face-off. I think it will be yeah. intense. I think it will be long. I think it'll be what somebody needs to have a, a, a piece of white paper ready just to slot it between the two of them and, and break the gaze. Whenever whenever they faced off before, I, I tend to ask them, what did you see in his eyes? And they both give very similar answers. They both say, oh, I saw eyes. Both exactly the same kind of thing. I wonder if this being the last one, it'll be different this time. The fact that they'll be they'll be sort of you know, they'll be topless, sort of ready to fight, they'll feel each other. Maybe it will be different this time. I don't know. What do you think? I think the best, the best face-off is generally the one you get at the at the weigh-in weigh because it's it? just yeah. much closer to business time. Yeah. They've had to make weight. They're they're switching gradually into fight mode. Yes. You know, as the week as the week goes on, the more experienced you are, the maybe the later you can do it. But gradually, you're kind of bit by bit. I remember Paul, Paulie Malanaji describing it to me once: is taking yourself to that place, mm -hmm. and we all know what he's talking about mentally preparing yourself for going to for going to war mm -hmm. to, to do, for doing whatever it takes to win because that's what you've got to be prepared to do in there whatever it takes and another aspect about this is Yard is the younger hungrier guy hungrier yeah. for success he hasn't done what Baturbi ever has done and as you get older too things can change priorities in your life can change and maybe you don't quite want it as much as you did and and when you end up in that really really hard fight it might not be there to the extent that you need it to be whereas for the other person who hasn't done what you've done it will be you know these are little things and, and it might sound like we're grasping a bit but 
they happen. You see it, don't you? You yeah, do see look, it. I think that's an interesting point about the hunger. I'm not sure I agree with you that Yard, that, that Baturbiev could be less hungry, just because I'm not sure that he has made that retirement money yet in his career. I, I think he'll need to do that because this fight, potentially a win could set up a fight with Canelo, Bivol. You'd think that these are bigger fights, big money fights. So I don't know about that, but it's... Um, it's very interesting. It's a possibility, but yeah. I would tend to agree with you that for the reasons you just mentioned, that for him, even though he is 38 and the unified champion, yeah. he hasn't really had that absolute crowning night just yet. It should really have been against Klaus Dick, it but should the have fight been. didn't attract the attention that it really should have for whatever reason. Yeah. Well, look, there's been other breaking news within the last hour or so. I'm sure you've checked your phone and you've seen it. It's on. It's official. Jake Paul, Tommy Fury, February 26th. Your initial thoughts, please, Andy? You know what, I am kind of fascinated by that fight. I'm, I'm not just saying that because uh, I quite fancy TalkSport picking that up and going over there, but I, I am genuinely kind of intrigued by it because we see with the Misfits boxing, it's got its own space and that's fine. You know, that's really where it should be, in its own space. But the thing with Jake Paul is that he's kind of, more than the others, I think he's dedicated himself to the yeah. sport and he's better than the rest of them and Tommy Fury is an actual professional boxer, although a novice. Uh, and I know KSI fought a, a, a professional a few weeks ago, but I don't count that. Um, whereas Fury will 100% he's coming to win. He's, he's not in the role of stooge here to kind of further Jake Paul's of course. boxing career. Of course. He's this here to a, end it. Exactly, this is a proper fight. Yeah. I was beginning to think that it probably wasn't going to happen, uh, but now it is happening. And I think as we get closer to it, it's going to be big news. I it's think going so to be big well. news. Look, I think it's important to define this, as you mentioned there, in its own lane from Misfits. This is not Misfits. This is a professional boxer in Tommy Fury, trains every day, and a professional boxer now in Jake Paul. I count him as a pro boxer. He's training three times a day. How many of these Misfits are doing that? This is a proper fight. Yeah, and that, that, is the, that, that, that is the difference, exactly. Exactly. You know, he's always said that he wants to box a pro boxer. He's boxed athletes from other sports, which I think, I think he's, th th these are clever people. You know, he's done it right so far, kind of faded MMA stars, if I'm not disparaging anyone there. I don't really follow it, so I don't really sure. know. A basketball player who clearly hadn't done a lick of proper training and got, and got knocked out. And the next step was always going to be box a pro boxer, someone who is acknowledged as being a pro boxer. You're not going to get in there with a really experienced fighter because Tommy Fury isn't that no. but you look at the background and somebody who's going to come to win yeah, for, for whom defeat against you is unfathomable is unthinkable. Yeah, yeah absolutely it's unthinkable for Fury I mean that, and you, you said it there it's unthinkable it's unfathomable and the pressure being put on that young man with so much what's going on he's about to you know, his partner's about to give birth and his dad is saying it's going to disown him if he loses. Tyson's saying he can stay in Saudi Arabia if he loses. What must be going through the mind of Tommy Fury? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how helpful that is, that, that level of pressure. I didn't know about the, um, about, about the kid that's on the way. Um, that, that could give you extra motivation, of course, or it could maybe be a yeah. distraction. But there's no doubt that they that he knows that he is absolutely he is expected to win this fight and that it's not going to go down well at all if he doesn't manage to do it so his metal will be will be very much tested because fight week will be interesting Jake Paul will have a few strokes that he's going to try and pull of course there's no, there's no question about that and he needs to try and make sure that he doesn't expend too much emotional mental energy during fight week he'll have to engage to an extent because you've got to do your part and sell the fight but at the same time, it's not like you admit defeat on that front, but you don't want to be tussling too much. Just do what you need to do and get out of the room yeah. Yeah, as absolutely. much as you can. Absolutely. Well, look, that, that, that's chat about pressure. Tell me about the pressure on Anthony Yard in this fight tomorrow night. Is he under more pressure than what he was three and a half years ago, ago against Sergei Kovalev? And the, the reason I say that is because he's heading out to Russia three and a half years ago. No one really expected him to win. A huge jump up in levels. This time he's at home. This time he'll look around in the crowd and he'll see familiar faces. Is he under more pressure this time? Yeah, I think he is for that reason. Because as you say, he is at home. Frank's got him that, that advantage. But he'll be under more pressure from himself. Yes. And that, that's kind of like the, the key thing really. Because although Baturbiev, I think, is a harder job 
It's difficult to work out which is a harder job because he was less experienced against Kovalev. Kovalev a little bit faded at that stage, although nine weeks later he was beating Canelo, I yeah, thought, until he, was he doing got very knocked well out. In that fight. Whereas now Yard is out a bit more seasoned, but then Baturbiev is better at this point than Kovalev was at that point. So it's hard to, the gap is probably about the same, but his expectations on himself, because it's not quite the foray into the unknown that it was before, will be greater. He'll yeah. see this as a huge opportunity. He, He's not, you know, he's there to win and he'll be devastated if he doesn't win. If he acquits himself well but loses, me and you will think, but, you know, you should be pleased with that. But they're never pleased with that. They're never proud of a defeat ever. Look, and we, we saw that recently with Denzel Bentley when he challenged, bravely challenged Janibek over in America. And everyone said, well, what a gallant effort. You were meant to get chinned in a round. That's what everyone was saying. Not me, by the way. And certainly not you. Certainly not you. Um, but... In defeat, he was getting interviews about, oh, you did so well, amazing. He was like, no, no, I, I wanted to win. I, I love that attitude. No, and, and they, they all, you know, all the ones who really achieve, they all have that because I've never met a professional yet who's been proud of a defeat. Maybe once you retire and you look back, you, you can be, but generally speaking, they just, they can't, they can't do that. It's just not in their DNA. You've, yeah. you've lost and that's all there is to it. It doesn't mean that you can't take some positives from it, but ultimately... This is professional sport and that, that's what makes them what they are, is that they're there to win. And if he doesn't win, Anthony, he'll be absolutely gutted. Well, look, I think we've got company. I think we've got the man with a 100% knockout rate. The man who's knocked out every man he's faced. Is it Artur Baturbiev? No, no, it's Sam Noakes. Come in, Sam. Come on. Should we, should we get Sam a mic? Should we, someone going to... So, come on. Come on. Let's get Sam a mic. So... How are you? <laughs> you all right? <laughs> Wait, I saw, I saw your Instagram. I saw you got my dream picture. Two guys with a 100% knockout rate. You did it. What advice did you give Baturbiev? I don't, he weren't very chatty, to be honest with you. <laughs> he ain't been. I was a little bit too scared to talk to him. <laughs> I was. I just got the photo. I was all like that. And yeah. I didn't even put my arm around him or nothing, oh, mate. Oh, mate. Just got the photo. And then the caption was probably a bit of you as well, wasn't what, it? What, what did you say? I said, uh, his photo the scariest man on the planet. And next to him, I'll do a bit of me. I saw mate, that. That's yeah. a that's, bit of you, in it? That is a bit of death. That's a bit of me, that. Um, Guys, have we got the big fight feel, by the way? This is weigh-in day. I'm looking around, and it's absolutely packed in here. It feels like a big one. Yeah, it does. Absolutely, it does. And I think, you know, having top rank over and Bob Arum and, and all of their staff, that definitely helps with that. But it, it does feel like that. Having that international fight between Dalakayan and Jimenez, that, that adds a little bit of spice to it for me, too. So, yeah, I don't know about yeah, you, no, but it well, does feel you, big. You can say, well, compared to yesterday with the media, uh, not yesterday, that was the press, but Wednesday, it's more people here than Wednesday, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing how busy the arena is tomorrow, to be yeah. honest. No, I've, I've heard it's done very well. Yeah. Um, give, give me your, your, just, just general thoughts about this, Sam. This is, this is a big fight in boxing. Queensbury's first show to kick off the year. Are you a bit gutted you're not on it? Uh, I am, to be fair, <laughs> but on the flip side, I'm, I'm happy on this weigh-in day, and I ain't got to sit around <laughs> yeah, looking yeah, all miserable. Yeah. So, but where well, there's a few of the boys on there, I'm looking forward to being able to just watch all the fights. I mean, you've got Moses making his debut, Carol's first title fight, my brother... And then the main event's tasty, isn't it? I mean, oh. I don't know what's going to happen with that before you ask me, but I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a good night of boxing. What a way to start the year for Frank. Oh, yeah, mate. It's an absolute banger. Look, I've, uh, I've, I've asked a few fighters so far. These weigh-ins, these face-offs, right? Do you ever... As we've got people walking Hello, through mad. It, We've got a chaotic <laughs> weigh-in. You, you're used to this. This is always how, happening all the time. How can you not spot? I don't, I don't, yeah. It's amazing. I mean, maybe I'll, I'll stand like this. You have to block it Bro out there. Broaden those shoulders. But... Um, Tell me this, when you're doing face-off with the fighter at the, the weigh-in, are you trying to get something out of it or, or not? No, nah, not really. I'm just thinking, oh, I can't wait to get off this bloody <laughs> stage, mate. Seeing in a, the thing is, it's hard to not, I don't know about these two boys, because obviously it's a bit more serious, but I find it hard not to laugh. Because in his head, he's going to go like, well, I've got to try and look mean here, do you know what I'm saying? And in my head, I'm just, I'm doing the same. Yeah. It's hard not to laugh, mate. He honestly is. Well, I asked Raven Chapman and she said, yeah, she tries to uh, outstare her opponent she tries to like make sure she's not the one who looks away first I mean I'm just going to bring you boys forward a little bit please. realistically yeah. it is what it is isn't it? I mean you yeah. staring at him ain't going to make no difference I don't think yeah. but I don't care really about all that I think it's, it all comes down to what type of person if someone looks in my eye longer than me I'm not going to think oh my god he's going to beat me now do you know yeah. what I'm saying just because he looked at me longer <laughs> like what, what, what about on the night when you get called to the centre of the ring? Because I'm always quite interested when the referee makes fighters touch gloves. Sometimes they'll look at each other. Sometimes one will want to look at the other one and the other one will look at the floor. Sometimes they'll both look at the floor. It's I what think, do you do? I think the one for um, the fight's a bit different, isn't it? I normally just stare them out and then obviously the ref will say, do you hear? I'll tap the ref, tap him 
and then it's back to the corner and it's game on, isn't it? But it's all little mind games, but if you're strong-minded, they don't really do a lot, really. Let me tell you this, that's a very interesting point you've brought up there, Andy, because I was watching back Anthony Yard's first fight with Kovalev. When they were brought together in the ring just before the very first bell, Anthony Yard didn't look at him. He was looking down, he was looking away. The Lyndon Arthur second fight, he was looking right at him like, I'm ready to go. So I wonder what we're going to see tomorrow. I oh, know that's interesting because people do it different ways. I, I did a fight last week, um, Echo Westerman against Chris Congo, and they both did look at each other. That's obviously yeah. how they do it. They just, Canelo doesn't generally tend to look at his opponent either. He's generally kind of I think it bows does. his head and just kind of, this is to the ref. And then <laughs> it's, it's like at that point, it's kind of like, I don't, I don't need to be looking at you now. I'm just thinking about what I'm going to do. That's, that's what I mean. I think everyone does it differently. I mean, if you're a weak-minded person and someone's bogging you out, then you sure. might think, oh, I don't know. But yeah. it's what it is. It's all, it's all mind games, isn't it? That's what it, that's what it comes down to. You, uh, you, you share a strength and conditioning coach with Moses Itelma uh, and Carol. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and there's and a few brother, of you down yeah, there. there. He's got um, a good stable down there, old Jordan. I like, so that's, that's the secret. It's Jordan, right? Yeah, it must be. He's going to love that. If he sees his back, he's going to love it. I mean... It's hard trying to keep up with them boys, to be honest. Well, I'll try and have a, we had a little competition. Um, who can do the most reps of 60 kilo? And oh, right. Obviously, he beat me, but I reckon I might be well, able you, to get. You lost to Moses Italian. Yeah, he that, done. Yeah. I think he done 53 reps, and I done 40. I think so. Oh, what far was the, what's the weight? 60 kilo. Jeez, okay. I fell off my fighting weight. That. Yeah, no, so exactly. That ain't too bad. No, you've, you've acquitted yourself well yeah, there. Listen, I'm a big little fella, aren't I? A big little fella. <laughs> a big little fella indeed. Um, just a reminder to viewers, we are here at the uh, the weigh-in. This is it. Anthony Yard, Art of Aturbiev, tomorrow night live on BT Sport from 7 o'clock. We're live on ESPN Plus as well. I'm here with Andy Clark. I'm here with Sam Noakes as well. Another man with a 100% KO rate. Um, we were just talking about Moses Italma. Tell us what he's like as a character. You spend a lot of time with him, right? Yeah, I mean, like, I think with Moses, what you see is what you get. Like, he's nice fella. He's an absolute machine as well. The weights he lifts in the gym. I mean, I've not actually seen him box live. So tomorrow will be the first time for me as well, even though we were... Uh, on the amateur circuit together, he was only in a neighbouring club, but I've never seen him box, so I'm very excited to see him do it. I've seen videos, but not, not live. What about Carol? Yeah, Carol's class, and yeah, he's yeah. class operator on and off, on and off camera. He's the same, and he, do you know what I mean? So he, yeah, brilliant fight. I'm, I'm excited for both of them. It's a big one. It's a big one, Andy. Look, look the uh, the room is heating up. I think. Uh, I think this is a very exciting time yeah. in boxing. It's yeah, got that feeling. Away ins, you literally do feel the room heat up because you get a lot of people in it, fighters. Oh, my hand's sweating. <laughs> if you get backstage with fighters as well, like it kind of, there's a certain smell and it's kind of partly they're making weight and their breath's not great a lot of the time, <laughs> but it's also adrenaline. Yeah, you, no. you do, you get that kind of, it's that kind of like, you get that kind of napalm in the air, don't you? In the weighing yeah. room when you're backstage waiting to come on, it's it's like the oh, temperature just, in there see is. See when I'm weighing in, boys, I don't like having too much of a chat, I just want to get it done. I mean. I remember one time you were doing the name call, I oh, already well, stripped off, jumped on them scales, yeah. I ain't waiting about. Yeah, that's always that's quite annoying actually, because I'm like trying to trying to yeah. G it all up. Uh, You've I'm already not, gone. I'm, to be fair, I don't even bring the belts with me when I weigh in anymore either. I always leave them at home as well. <laughs> I just want to get in, get done, get home, bosh, done. Well look, I can see I can see Adam Morley out of the corner of my eye, who perhaps is gonna come in for a chat if he if he wants to turn around. Come on, let's have a chat. Come on. Let's mic? have a chat. Someone in. someone grab We're this man in. a mic. Well, you can probably grab it yourself. Come on, grab that. Grab that mic. Grab that mic. Come in, Adam Morley. Come, let's let's stand here. You know it's a big fight when Adam Morley rocks up and he's got nothing to do with it. Hey, how are you? No, I know you got. I know you got Tommy. I know you got Tommy. You're here for Yard Baturbia, aren't you? Come on. Um, how excited are you about this fight? Yard Baturbia. Yeah, talk to me. Great, great fight. I think you know Baturbia's what 38 years old. I think people are wondering what he's got in the tank, what he's got left in the tank, and then they're looking at Anthony Yard and thinking. Kind of what Anthony Yard are they going to get? You know, so I think it's a ter terrific fight. Well, you mentioned it there. You are here really on Tommy Fletcher business. He is I an, an S-Jam fighter. You are his manager. Yep. Um, he has looked picture perfect so far. He has left people asleep. Um, how are you finding his career so far? Yeah, look, I think for a fighter like Tommy, you've got to turn up and do the business. And if you do the business, Queensbury, BT, those guys invest in you. And they like what Tommy's doing. It's appealing to boxing fans, it's appealing to casual fans. Yeah. They want to see people get knocked out, put to sleep. That guy last time was out for like 60 seconds, wasn't he? He was. And yeah, although a very it's, good knockout, that one. It's a good knockout. Although it's like you knocked tomorrow as well, even though he's got a tough desk. I've had a he's got a tough. Jordan. You think he's going to knock Daryl yeah, Sharp out? Well, because Carroll would have done it if it was over six. That'd be six. impressive. Yeah. No, 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 because I reckon Carroll would have done it if it was over six rounds. Yeah, and obviously Tommy's the weight above and he's got six rounds. So. 
I've got faith in Bois. I've had a little bit with him. He's only been three times in 96 losses. Yeah, he's very See, tough. See, that's what I mean. He sells himself already, doesn't it? I've got faith in the boy. I've got faith in him. I've got faith in Tommy he's going to do. Honestly, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. But with regard to him, you probably can't say too much, but. I mean, I remember hearing a, a while ago, maybe towards the back end of 2021 or early last year, that there were a few people after him, and I thought he might be going somewhere else, but then he ended up signing with Queensbury. I Chose think there, correctly. Was, yeah. there were suitors, weren't there? There were definitely suitors. We spoke to um, a lot of different promoters. Obviously, we have boxers with a lot of promoters. We spoke to them, but Tommy loved it when he met Frank and George, actually, and Andy Ayling. But he particularly loved it when he met Frank and George, and Frank has the track record in building a heavyweight which is what Tommy may well turn out to be from the ground up. When, when do you think that will happen? He's, he's 21 now, right? Yeah. He's six foot seven. And, is that and what he is? Six foot seven. He's just 21. <laughs> he's younger That's than you, mate. That's a lot of man. That's a lot of man. That's a lot of him. That's, yeah. And what, Moses is like 18. Like it's, it's, it's a kid's game, isn't it? A young man's game. Yeah. Well, what they're eating, man. I'm only like five, eight and a half. <laughs> I think, you know, not right now. I mean, he was taking fights between 13, five and 14, four not so long ago. Yeah. So he's going to go past Cruiser. I think, you know, year to two years get him in the heavyweight mix I've seen he's been uh, he's been sparring heavyweights though right he's been putting in the rounds with uh, big Johnny Fisher how's that he going? is good I mean he, he does a lot of sparring with Johnny but we're even thinking of maybe sending him out to Vegas to spar Joe okay. if Joe uh, has a heavyweight southpaw next okay then Tommy might be good but Joe's like you know doesn't particularly doesn't want to get knocked out by Tommy Fletcher. <laughs> Who would? Yeah, you, you don't want to deteriorate that chin. <laughs> no, 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 I don't think Joe Joyce is scared of getting knocked out by anybody. <laughs> no, to be I'm, honest I'm, with you. I'm with you on that as well. But, but saying that, you don't want Joe Joyce taking massive lumps in sparring every, every no. week, though, do you? Joe's not, Joe's not afraid of it, but, you know, it's like Tommy does hit hard. Yeah, you're, you're right. You have to be sensible. Yeah. You have to be sensible in the gym because as indestructible as he seems, putting miles on the clock is, is, never, is never a good idea. Oh, and Tommy's had, we've had instants won't talk about instance inspiring where you know other people have come off quite badly so we don't need to do that to Joe Joyce talking about the main event though um, Adam what have you made of Artur Baturbiev's demeanour I'm sure you followed yeah. some of him just yeah, like yeah. sandbagging me this week <laughs> look he's when you have a boxer like that I think it's difficult at the start of their career to promote them because they're all about the boxing that's what he wants to do he's not about you know, slating people or having big story, and and his quality just comes through. So I, I love his quality. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a quirky character. He's uh, he's given a lot of one-word answers. At this point, fighters they just want to fight, don't they? They're in fight. We they don't care about any of this. No, I mean, but Terbiev doesn't. I think Anthony Yard's probably more of a showman in that regard. Yeah. But I'd love him to win. I'd love Anthony to win. Brilliant. Well, look, it's been great talking to you, Adam. We'll Cheers. let you go. We'll probably swap you out for someone. Thank I'll you take that off you. Uh, good luck with Tommy. And the official weigh-in is now starting. And we're going to have a look at the weigh-in. Well, a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, the doors will open tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. Our first fight will begin at 5 p.m. And then at 7 p.m. London time, we will be going live on BT Sport and ESPN+. Plus. Well, we are going to begin the weigh-in process with two fighters competing in a scheduled 10-round contest, and it will be for the vacant WBC International Light Heavyweight Championship. First to the scale, coming to us from Buenos Aires, Argentina. He brings a record consisting of 28 wins, 10 defeats, with 18 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ezekiel Osvaldo Maderna. Twelve stones, six pounds, eleven ounces for Ezekiel Osvaldo Maderna. And now we welcome to the scale his opponent tomorrow night in this championship contest, 
undefeated with nine wins. Seven of his nine wins come by way of knockout from Chatham, Kent, England. Let's welcome Carol Italma. Twelve stone, six pounds, two ounces for Carol Atalma. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, these two competing tomorrow night in a scheduled 10-round contest. It will be for the vacant WBC International Light Heavyweight Championship. medalist, one of the two Italma brothers featuring tomorrow night live on BT Sport and this could be a glimpse into the future of British boxing, one of them making his pro debut, one of them fighting for his first title. I'm joined here stage side by Andy Clark, stage side by Sam Noakes, we had to get another guy Our next knocked out every man in his face and uh, delighted to be in your company boys. First two to scale from the Czech Republic. His professional record, two wins, just one defeat. Both of his wins come by way of knockout. Let's welcome Marcel Bode. Well, Marcel Bode is the man assigned with the task of a... I mean, he's gonna have it rough tomorrow, aren't they? Well, let's see if it bodes well, hey? In these situations, I do wonder how much the fighter knows about the opponent. What has the manager told him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a, a little holiday to England. Fifteen stone ten. He's a small heavyweight then. Small heavyweight. Well, very interested to see what Moses weighs in at. at Eighteen years old. I feel a little bit sorry for the boy, to be honest. Making his professional boxing debut. Let's welcome Moses Atalma. Well, there you have it. Fantastic yeah, ovation play. here for Moses Italma. The T-shirt says past, present, future. He's crossed out the past, he's crossed out the future, and he is focused on the present. The present is now. He makes his debut tomorrow night live on BT Sport. 17 stone, 10 pounds. 17 for cent for Moses Italma. How do we feel about that weight for, for an 18-year-old heavyweight making his debut? Yeah, that's pretty good, I think. Again, 17 stone 10. Now, so what's that in? When you convert it, that's 248 pounds, that is, I think. So, you know, you, you can see that there's, there's kind of... I wouldn't say puppy fat necessarily, but there's kind of... There's weight there that, that can still be converted into solid muscle, would you say? Yeah, no, I agree with you. I know what you're saying. As you say, he's only 18, I mean, yeah, I suppose if he, is, if he gets any bigger, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think he's going to get bigger, that's the thing, and it's exactly what you said, Andy. You can see there's, there's parts where it's soft, where it will get harder, it will get a lot harder, especially all the work he's doing alongside yourself yeah. and Jordan Vine, but an exciting moment for British boxing. Come on, our next two combatants to the scale compete tomorrow night in a scheduled 12-round contest, and it will be for the WB. Here come the flyweights. The, scale, the world title challenger coming to us from Cartago, Costa Rica, Pura Vida. He brings an undefeated record consisting of 12 wins. Nine of his 12 wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is David 
Merajita Jimenez. Well, it's fight number 13 for the fired up Costa Rican. Challenges for the WBA World Flyweight Championship tomorrow night live on BT Sport. A real, a real bonus attraction, really. A, a, a world title fight between a Ukrainian and a Costa Rican that has landed in the UK. What a, what a treat, Andy. What a treat. I'm all over this one. I, I like this fight a lot because we spoke to him the other day, Jimenez, and you, you get a feel for whether somebody's really coming expecting to win or whether they're hoping yes. to win or, or, or what the crack is with them. He is expecting to win. He came over, filled us in on his amateur record, 250 plus fights. He's got a, a bronze at the World Championships, a silver at a Pan Ams. They are very, very hard earned. And there's nothing on his record really apart from his last fight, but it was a huge win yeah. in California away against Sandoval, who's a rated fighter, went to his backyard, beat him on points, which is a difficult thing to do away from home. So he is... You, you, you know what I mean, Sam? It's just sometimes you see, you'll have seen backstage or during fight week opponents, not necessarily yours, but you get a feel, don't you, for the way that they've travelled, how many people there are with them, whether they really mean business or not. Yeah, see, I've not, uh, I've not seen either of these two fight before, so I'm looking forward to this. You're saying they're good fighters, isn't that? This is a fight between the Ring Magazine number six flyweight, that is Jimenez, and the Ring Magazine number three flyweight, the man that he is announcing right now, Artem Darkai. It's a high level fight, so. Good, good fight. Well, it's a world's hard fight, yeah, I imagine it will be, yeah. Well, not always, mate, not always, but this one certainly is. Fight number 22 for Artem Delacroix. The last few years of his career have been a little bit plagued by inactivity. The pandemic didn't help. The war certainly didn't help. But he's kicking off this year, defending his world title against an unbeaten fighter. 35 years old now, Artem Delacroix. Rated number three by Ring Magazine. Unbeaten in 21 fights. He looks quite big for a flyweight though, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a big, he's, he's a thick guy, you can see it. There's, there's a bit of a density to him. What are you seeing, Andy? Well, you mentioned the inactivity and that, as you get older, is always, can be a problem when it comes to the weight, but particularly at these, at these lower weights. And obviously the circumstances aren't, aren't ideal with what's going on in Ukraine. He's been, he's been training in Kiev, his family are elsewhere, he's got four kids. Seven stone, 13 pounds, 10 ounces. For well, he's done it. He's done it. And he looks okay, doesn't he? He doesn't yeah. look, you know, he looks fine yeah, to me. Sweet, aren't he? Yeah. Proudly got that Ukrainian flag. Proudly got that WBA belt. This is a, an elite level world champion defending his crown in this country tomorrow night. One of two elite level world champions doing that live on BT Sport and ESPN+. Plus. Let's have a look at the face off. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, these two compete tomorrow night in a 12 round contest. It will be for the WBA he looks up for it, he? Flyweight <laughs> Championship of the World. You know, both of them have got that look in the eye, that 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 knowing, that that feeling. They they are not here to lose. Artem Delacroix has no intention of leaving this country without his world title. And I tell you, David Jimenez has no intention of leaving this country without a world title. You can see it, Andy. Yeah, he, he mentioned it the other day. He wants to become Costa Rica's first professional world champion, and that's a great aim to have, a great ambition to have. I think that's going to be a good fight. We've seen some really, really good fights at flyweight and super flyweight over the last 10, 15 years, really. And I think this one's going to deliver. Yeah, and I think that the rest of the flyweight division will be watching on. Of course, as I mentioned there, by Ring Magazine, Dalekine is rated number three. Jimenez is number six. The number two ranked flyweight in the world right now is Julio Cesar Martinez, and number one is Sonny Edwards. So it's a it's a fight that will get a lot of attention tomorrow night. Oh, Sonny, I know, has been after Dalekayan for a while. Him and him and Charlie went over to spar him, probably about four years ago, something like that, and they felt like they both did well against him. So they've. He's always wanted this fight, Sonny. I think it's right that he's number one because he's had some good defences. Um, Alvarado in his last fight was a tough, tough guy. He got through that one. He wanted that Martinez fight. He's wanted it for ages. There just seemed to be problems around making it. And it'd be great if he could get a unification, Sonny Edwards, because he's just a very good fighter, isn't he? Yeah, of course. And we, of course, we want to see that. And let's see, uh, let's see part one of that tomorrow night as we wait. For the way in for the final time that Anthony Yard and Arta Baturbiev will face off. 
I can't see a table in sight for Baturbiev to punch Sam, so uh, let's hope he doesn't try and punch Anthony Yard, yeah, Sam. Not, not till tomorrow, anyway. Can't be doing that. I see even the, didn't he get a bit angry on the press conference as well? With, with me? Yeah. yeah. With you? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Oh, it's on you, is he dead? <laughs> well, look, oh, what did you say to I that when he got I, mad with you? I tried I'm to sorry. be... I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm so, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I tried to be clever with how I asked him if he was going to knock out Anthony Yard early because he always talks about doing his work so I said are you going to try and do your work quickly and he was like why are you trying to make me angry oh yeah sorry I didn't mean that sorry mate you've been sorry. looking good you've been in the gym mate. looking well mate well it's filling up here nicely at Wembley it's got that big fight feel 7 o'clock tomorrow night live on BT Sport uh, a real fight of consequence, a fight that means something. Arthur Baturbiev defending his unified crown against Anthony Yard. I'm joined by Andy Clark. I'm joined by Sam Noakes. They're both very excited. Um, and Sam, tell us again, you met Arthur Baturbiev yesterday and he didn't really say much to you. Yeah, no, I wasn't uh, going to put my arm around him for the photo. I thought, well, I'll just do whatever he does. He didn't seem very chatty, but I can understand that. Probably check weight day. Yeah. Got a big fight coming up. I, yeah. I can respect that. Yeah. I'd probably be the same. I'd be thinking, who's this little fella? Go away. <laughs> you always see the stage fill up, don't you, when the when the main event's about to get on. Just just someone stood next to George Warren there is, you know, he's an absolute legend. Isvan Kovac, Coco Kovac, who was Olympic champion, world champion, European champion as an amateur, WBO champion as a as a professional, uh, representing the WBO. You know, you've got these guys who've been around it for years and years and years, and everybody gets equally excited no matter how long they've been doing it about a big fight you just yeah. get just gets in you doesn't it bit by bit during the week it's the dial gets turned up the temperature gets raised and you see I think what always kind of gets me more and more into it Sam is just looking at fighters because if you're fighting on Wednesday you're kind of quite happy you know you'll be nice and relaxed on Thursday your face looks a little bit more pinched mm -hmm. and you might not say quite as much on Friday it's it's showtime and you're having to make the weight and everything just gets a lot more tense. Yeah, I remember with my last fight, obviously Wednesday we had the media day, see your opponent, you're all like, hello mate, doing like, you're all right. And then Thursday we had the press conference, still a little bit more chatty, but you know, like once he gets to weigh-in day, it's like, I'm done now, I don't want to, I've done all I've got to say, I don't want to say no more. And I think you're going to see that, they look serious all week, so yeah, yeah. I think today's going to be like, definitely, good old tension. I, I always them. make sure if I've got questions, Wednesday and Thursday you've got to get them done by Wednesday or Thursday because Friday, Friday you're not going to get anything no. because before the weigh-in you don't want to know and as soon as you made the weight you're I'll off involved. you're out you're down I the road one of mine before he was like oh Sam can I grab you for an interview I said yeah 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 no problem after mate after come I'll slip straight out the back door and I was gone <laughs> <laughs> our participants they will be competing in a 12 round fight I'll tell you what, if Anthony Yard pulls this off, it's going to be some win for him, mate. I hope he does it, I honestly do. It's a big one, it's a big win for British boxing. Yeah, that's going to be huge. Massive, isn't it? You think of the fights, even if you look at the light heavyweights over here, mate. Two defeats, 22 of his 23 wins, coming by way of knockout, here is Anthony, the beast from the east, Yard. Here is Anthony Yard, a tremendous ovation here in Wembley for Anthony Yard. The second time he is challenging for a world title. We are three and a half years removed from that first challenge. He has grown as a person, he has grown as a fighter, and he believes his experience now, that he learnt from that Kovalev fight, that he learnt from those Lyndon Arthur fights, will be key in what happens on Saturday night. He's always in tremendous shape, and yeah, yeah. always. Yeah, he, he looks absolutely terrific, like he always does. Quite pinched in the face, but that's that's no problem. You would expect that. He's a big old geezer, mate. <laughs> Isn't he? Isn't he? Well put, <laughs> Sam. He's a big old geezer. He's going to be even bigger tomorrow. 12 stone, 6 pounds, 4 ounces. What's that, what's that, in, uh, what's that in kilos? 79 kilos, is it something like that? Yeah, it's roughly that, yeah. It's perfectly on weight. The hard work is now done. And now done. we welcome to the scale the defending world champion. He comes to us from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. He is undefeated with 18 wins. All 18 wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The reigning and defending WBO, WBC, and IBF unified light heavyweight champion of the world. Arthur 
Walter Betterbeev. Well, here is Walter Betterbeev. Fight number 19 as a professional. Was of course introduced with all those belts, WBC, IBF and WBO. He is also the lineal light heavyweight champion. 12 stone, 6 And a very, very scary man. For Arthur Betterbeev. I wonder if they'll if they'll have to trim that beard a little bit before tomorrow because in pro boxing and in amateurs now they've they've relaxed the the, the kind of rules on beards because for, for religious reasons you can't be telling somebody that they need to get rid of their beard when it's crucial to their to their faith. But it is quite bushy, isn't it? I wouldn't be surprised if if he has to have a bit of a trim. I remember they might make him do it. Yeah, maybe. I'm not absolutely sure. I remember I got it once. I boxed in Scotland as an amateur, yeah. And boys, I don't get a lot of facial hair either, yeah. <laughs> and they made me say they give me a one blade razor. It was horrible, it was. I think that's a silly rule myself. No, they've they've relaxed it now. There's a fighter, Kevin Lilly fighter oh, in, in the I've turned over. They've relaxed it. <laughs> in the Singh Bassi, basically, they they kind of they weren't they did it absolutely the right way, but just made the authorities aware that for religious reasons. You, you can't you can't be telling people to shave off their their beards. It's it's not really acceptable. Let's see, let's see this face off. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this our main event tomorrow night. Twelve round schedule for the WBO, WBC, and IBF Unified Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Always tense. It is. It Always is. Tense. You can see that. We had a good one last week between Eubank and Smith, and this is this is a good one. This is up there. Both fighters mean business. I wonder what they're waiting for. You know when you say about the first to look away. The unified World Light Heavyweight Championships on the line tomorrow night, live on BT Sport and ESPN Plus in America. A, a magnificent fight. Artur Paterbiev looks every inch the beast, and Anthony Yard looks every inch the beast as well. I think we're going to try and grab a quick chat with Arthur Paterbiev. I might lean on Andy to ask the questions in case he chins me. Case I <laughs> I'll keep but, it brief, I think, if, but, uh, uh, if he wins his way over here, because he's going to want to get away. He's not going to want to say a lot. I think that's... I think, I think we know that, don't we? I think we know that. I think he's not wanted to say a lot all week, but both fighters made weight. That is the main headline here. Both guys have made weight. We have got a fight tomorrow night live on BT Sport. Artur Baturbiev and Anthony Yard. We can't wait for this one. It, what, what did you make of the face-off? It looked quite intense to me. Yeah, no, I agree with you. It looks tense, but it's going to be. It's a big fight. And I mean, yeah, I don't think either will want to lose today, but... I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be some scrap. Oh, yeah, I am, some, I am. Look, this, there's just something about it. You mentioned it there about the Eubank Smith one. That that had something good. But this this had that as well. And it's got all those belts there as well. There's, there's something in I'll the air. Off me. No, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we'll go have a chat with him. Yeah, there's, there's just a lot at stake, isn't there? For, for Baturbiev, there's an enormous amount at, at stake. Because as you mentioned, he maybe hasn't had that one big money fight yet. Uh, and, and generally speaking, the big money comes at the back end of your career. And he's got to hold on for that. that. That's why he needs to keep winning because he's got a family to support and he wants to make sure he gets as much out of this professional boxing career as he possibly can. For Yard, it's, he'll feel like it's his turn, it's his time. And Batubi have kind of broke off and faced the front first, but no, there's nothing in yeah, that. Yeah, but I don't you, he's got there's 18 and no 18 KOs. I don't, you can't look into that too much. <laughs> he can do what he wants, can't yeah, he? Mate, he does, yeah, mate. Well, especially around me, I ain't saying nothing I'm to just, him. Uh, I'm just hearing in my ear that he, uh, he may have rushed out of the building so they're trying to get hold of him to bring him back. I think maybe they said, yeah, ain't gonna do, you come back. Go, do you want to go and talk to Dev? So they probably thought, oh, I don't know about that. No, it's because uh, you upset him yesterday, thinking I can't look at him again, I'm going to end up hurting yeah. him. I think, to be honest, I think with, with media obligations, if somebody kind of feels like they've said everything that they're going to say or want to say, yeah, then right. it's probably better not to make them. I mean, the geese is a world champion. He can do what he wants. If he don't oh. want to come down and talk to me, he ain't got to, has he? <laughs> I'm not going to tell him different. Do it, especially if he's got a record like that. Yeah, and, and there's no point. Let him do what he wants. Well, if you don't do want to do it, I don't want to do it. Yeah, I'll probably ring him up. Sorry, Arthur. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, the way in process is going to continue very shortly here. Anthony Yard is talking to BT Sport. We understand that uh, Anthony Yard will be brought over to us as well for a quick chat. Do you know what? Both of these fighters when they've done their last face-offs, I've said to them, what did you see in his eyes? And they both just say, I've just seen eyes. They don't read anything into it. But I wonder, I was speaking to Andy about this earlier, I wonder if this close to a fight, maybe they have seen something. You know, they're all up there, all, all close and personal, about well, to fight. they need a drink or something. That's well, what he yeah. was going through there. And, oh, I can't wait to get this done and get some food in there. Yeah. Well, Arthur Baturbi was straight on the drink as well. Mm -hmm. I saw it. Yeah, but they're big geezers for the weight, though, aren't yeah. they? They are big, so 
What's I think that, you, what's that rehydration process like? Because I'm, you know, I don't really understand all of this. It's not quite as simple as just drinking a massive bottle of water. I mean, what do you? You've got your drink prepared by your trainer, but you can't guzzle it down. I guess. I mean, how do well, you? They, they those say, hours that day, how do you do it? They say you should have little sips, and obviously, I've jumped on my nutritionist now, and they say leave an hour before eating, but. There's no way that you're not going to be guzzling that bottle of water down there. That's, that's not lasting very long. But you're supposed to take it easy, are you? Yeah, you're supposed to do a lot of things, isn't you? I suppose, but at the end of the day, I'll, I'll, well, I'm getting that drink down as quick. If I'm thirsty, I'm going to drink it, I suppose. But there's, there's a, there's I think a it's more the food. I think it's more the yeah. food. That's the thing, because obviously your stomach's a bit smaller, so you've got to stretch it out with the fluids. Yes. But I think it's more what you eat after rather than the fluids you get on board, because it's more the more fluids, the better. What, what do you think he'll be doing now after Perturbia, then? Is it... Is it I mean, he won't, just be going that drink. he won't just be going straight in yeah. Nando's, though, will he? He's probably got his own... Yeah, he'll, he'll, have to, he'll probably have to do the same as we have to do, wait an hour and then go from there. Well, let's do, have mate. a chat to a man. Mate, mate I'll tell you, please, whoever gets his mic after in, me is sweating his. This is a man, a young man, about to uh, make his pro debut. Moses, let's jump, jump in the middle there, mate. But you're a big old boy, jump aren't you? Jump in the middle. Look at the size of you. How was it? Your first way in as a pro. Talk to us. Uh, like I said, it's a bit different from the amateurs. You don't really get the flashing light on people, but... <laughs> Yeah, I can, I can get used to this. You had a face-off with him as well, Mr. Bode. Uh, did, did it bode well for you? What do you think? Um, I don't really know what to say. You just kind of look in someone's eyes and just... See, I tomorrow, told you, no tomorrow. one thinks nothing of it, mate. No, you you just, don't think nothing of it. You did just you try, were you trying not to laugh or were you all serious? No, do you know what it is? I don't know. I actually don't know. You just look, you're looking at someone and you know you're scrapping them tomorrow, so... You don't, I don't really think anything We're boxers. We don't have a lot going through our heads, to be <laughs> honest with you. But you, you boys, you train together. I mean, how's he looking to you? Is he looking big and strong? Uh, he's always big and strong. I'm always trying to keep up with him, isn't I? Uh, I'm not on the runs, mate. The fella takes off. Oh, I can <laughs> run you, but you're a big geezer. You don't need to run. Uh, big night for the Atelma family. We yeah, understand of half of Slovakia is coming over for yeah, this as well. This, it's a big night. You must be delighted. Yeah, of course. Um, I'm, I'm truly blessed. Um, obviously, without God, this opportunity wouldn't take place. I want to thank him. But um, yeah, now Slovakia is coming. Um, obviously, Nigeria is coming, and yeah, the whole of Britain will be in there as well. So it's going to be a bit mad. Well, uh, you must be so excited that all you've got to do now, all you've got all of this stuff out of the way. As I mentioned yesterday, you've had more press conferences than what you've had fights. Literally. You've now had more weigh-ins than what you've had fights. <laughs> now you get to have your fight. Yeah, of course. No, I'm excited. Excited. I'm excited. Um, not only for me, but to everyone to watch what um, I've been working on since I was like nine, ten years old. And, and you only get, you know, you only get one pro debut. I speak to fighters sometimes, and they say it all just kind of flashed by, and they didn't really take any of it in. It's important for you this week, but you seem like a relaxed kind of a lad. But important tomorrow that although you're locked in completely, you need to you need to stay in the moment and enjoy it. Yeah, no. Um, everyone, everyone always says enjoy enjoy the moment, but it's hard to enjoy a fight when someone's trying to come take take your head off. But yeah, I no, I finally got good team, man. I don't really <laughs> like remember my debut. It was like I remember walking in and then boom, it was done. Literally, as soon as I, like, I just want to go in there, get the job done, and then I can enjoy after. Have you I can get paid for overtime, mate. <laughs> have you been getting advice from from Carol? Because he, look, he's had a pro debut. You know, Sam. All, all these boys have what, had what their pro debut. What can I tell it? I mean, what yeah. can I tell it? You can tell him all sorts. Go on. Yeah, what, no, what um, can tell I, uh, my brother got, got, gave me an advice to just take one take one, one fight at a time, but. Kind of already know that already, so no, the, I, I don't really receive advice because I've kind of been, especially when I was back as the amateur, because I was like the one that everyone looked up to. It's like I'm the one giving out the advice, and now that I'm a bottom of the a bottom of the chain, it's a bit different. Well, you only get one professional debut, Moses. You make sure you enjoy yours. We're going to let you go. Go and do what you got to do. Best of luck to you, my Thank friend. you very much. What, what appreciate are you doing right now, by the way? Are you off, are you off down to Nando's? Nando seems to be the restaurant of choice for fighters. What's, um, what's, what's the, I'm not too the sure. Table? Now, my, I know my brother's starving right now. so <laughs> He yeah, ain't I'm got that gonna, problem being heavyweight. I'm going gonna, gonna to go wherever he's going and um, yeah, just follow, follow wherever he's going. Good man. Best of luck yeah, to you, thank Moses. You thank you so, so much. You don't want to shake yourself. <laughs> <man. My hands laughs> that is a young heavyweight, 18 years old, making his pro debut. We're going to crack on with the way in here. We've got Tommy Fletcher on the scales here. Let's... Let's have a look at what's going on. Tommy Fletcher has been uh, assuring us this week that his opponent needs to bring a pillow with him. I mean, that, that's good. That's fighting talk, isn't it, Sam? Have you ever told your opponent, bring a pillow, you might need it? No, I'm a nice guy, Deb. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a nice guy. I don't tell him all that because I don't like uh, pride comes before the fall, really. So I'll try and just talk about it afterwards. Like, oh, I knew this was going to happen. 
But um, so you're not into your pillow talk, no? <laughs> no, not with geezers, no. <laughs> But um, he's got a tough night. I mean, if Stale Sharp is very tough, but I think where it's over six, I've got faith in Tommy, you know, to get the job done in under six. Absolutely. You can see the new trim as well. He's a, This is a man who is ready yeah, to he, go. He looks like he likes him stare off as well, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, look, the, the guy he's fighting, Daryl Sharp, has only ever been stopped three times. We were talking about it earlier with Adam Morley, because Adam Morley is convinced he, Tommy Fletcher's going to stop him. Yeah, I mean, if he can, then, then that would be a bit of a statement. I mean, yeah. Daryl's, generally speaking, boxer kind of super middle and, and light heavyweight, but he knows what he's doing. He's, he's one of our, our next really good away corner fighters. He's a good operator. He's good. He's scheduled six-round featherweight contest. First to the scale from Boaco, Nicaragua. His record, 17 wins, 13 beats, two draws, seven wins, call by way of knockout. Here he is. Lester Lara. Well, here comes Lester Lara, who will be the opponent tomorrow night for Masood Abdullah. Masood Abdullah unbeaten in seven fights. This is eighth fight, and as Lester creeps up onto the scales, you don't see that very often. He looks up for it as well, doesn't he? He does look up for it. He's, he's not here to mess about. Winning record. Nine stones, six pounds, ten ounces. For Lester Alada. It's fight number 33. Now to the steel, the here's a fight tomorrow night. Last time he's here. London, England. Undefeated with seven wins. Five of his seven wins. Come by way of knockout. Let's welcome Masood Superman. Well, here comes the unbeaten 7 0 Islington featherweight, 29 years old. Said a couple of months ago he wasn't actually announced onto this card. He said, I want to get onto the card. And suddenly there was a pull out and he's ended up on the card. So good for him. Yeah, good card to land on, to be yeah. honest. I like Masood. You always get a good scrap with Masood as well. Yes. Yes. He watched his last fight. I don't remember where it was, but Nine that was a good tear up. For Masood Abdullah. Feeling the look as well. He's got he's got the glasses on. I think he should be doing that. There's a there's a Clark Kentness about that. Uh, Pierce O'Leary does it as well. It's a it's a good look. It's quite misleading, isn't it? Because it yes, that's not what you're going to see in the ring on the night. There's just a kind of congregation of uh, big wigs in front of us. They've just broken up the British, British Boxing Board of Control Secretary Robert Smith, referee Steve Gray, Cole Moretti from top rank and. It's these kind of huddles that you like about these weeks, isn't it? Yeah. Particularly on a weigh-in day. There's, there's stuff to be done. Subsequently, there'll be rules meetings and all that kind of thing. And sometimes fighters go. Generally speaking, they don't because you want to be left alone for that. But you've got to make Once sure again, that general, your representatives are there because this is boxing and things can happen behind the scenes that are a little bit unexpected at times. So that the, the admin, the red tape, is not quite over yet. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're not quite there yet but seven o'clock tomorrow night we will be there that's when we go live on bt sport and here's masood abdullah who you're looking at unbeaten featherweight taking on lester lara tomorrow night we're at the weigh-in at wembley to the scale competing tomorrow in a scheduled six round international super welterweight contest Johnny, first to the no, scale from croatia he has 58 professional bouts to his credit Let's welcome Avita Kovacevic. Well, look at this. We have just been joined by a six foot seven monster, Mr. Tommy Fletcher. We're going to have a look over there. Jump in the middle here, please, my friend. Jump in the middle there. Um, Tommy Fletcher, you are facing Daryl Sharp. You have been telling people that Daryl Sharp needs to bring a pillow. Does he? Listen, mate. Well, he didn't bring with him now, but if he wants one, he can have it, mate. I'm telling you, I'm uh, on Saturday. I'll get behind the jab, mate. I'm gonna look to do a few rounds and put him out in devastating fashion. But if I get the valuable rounds in, then I can't complain because that's what I need in my career going forward. That'll be quite a statement. We were talking about Daryl Sharp. He's only been stopped three times in his career. If you're able to do that, that's that's a bit of a statement. That's what I'm saying. You see, my last opponents, yeah, they uh, they all come to win. They all had a go, but then. Uh, 
like obviously they've not been stopped before. I was the first one to do it. But when you're fighting a man that's had a hundred odd fights, only been stopped three times, I feel like that in a way, not to the casual fans, but to the hardcore boxing fans, you'll know that's probably more of a statement than what it would be to uh, stop someone that's uh, that oh, yeah, had three fights. You stop him, mate. That's a good. That's Definitely. a good scout, mate. That's yeah. a good scout. Would be a good scout. Um, we're gonna. What, what, what's your What's your prediction for the main event? Yar Paterbia. How, how do you see that one going? The main event. I'm. I'm tell you the truth. I really do think it's a tough, tough ask for Yard. But I think, um, looking at them both today, I think Yard's got. He's got a very good chance. But he's got to get in there, and I think he's got to get his respect early. He's got to nail him early of a good shot, gain his respect, and I believe the Phil Shelley won't really work for him for this fight because uh, Baturbiev he comes in abundance, he throws a lot of shots, and that I think with that he might get picked. So if he gets in there, hurts him early, and uh, takes it to him, he could he's at, he's had a, he's got a good chance of winning this fight. He's a kind of fighter, Baturbiev, isn't he? He's a, he'll hit what you give him. So exactly. he'll hit that shoulder if he has to, and hit that shell and break it. You know that's what he looks to try and do. So yeah, I'm, 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 I'm with you on that. I just wonder, like, how easy or difficult is it still for you to make cruiser? To be honest, I was in the amateur on light heavyweight. I was doing 81 kilos, which is uh, I think that's 185 pounds. Then obviously COVID and that. And then uh, I said, I said, I joined Mark. I said to him, I want to do light heavyweight still. Him and Jimmy looked at me like. You're like, are you crazy? Like, no, you, you won't be able to do light heavy. So I thought, you know what, I'll move up to cruise weight. So now I'm making it fine. I'm literally breezing it. I'm making cruise weight fine. So um, for the next few years, I'll be at cruise weight, but there's no doubt at all I will be a heavyweight in a few years. No, no doubt at all. I'm six foot seven, got broad shoulders. You know I mean, I'm not be the thickest set yet, but I'll keep eating, mate. I'll be up there with them big, big old lumps, big boys. Let's have a look at Sean the Nightmare Noakes. Sam, of course. Two nightmares. I'm the real nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the Norfolk nightmare. I'm the Norfolk nightmare. Yeah. Sean Noakes, fight number four for him tomorrow night. Well, I'm the bigger one out of the two at the minute. I'm actually heavier than he is. You're he well, heavier, yeah, well, at the moment. Even though Sean. he's on welterweight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what have you been doing, Sam? <laughs> oh, well, I'm still carrying a little bit of holiday weight. He's very confident, Sean, I think, very confident. Yeah, I think the um, I think six rounds will suit him a little bit better as well. So I don't like them four rounds. They're a little bit rough still, aren't they? Really. It's his first six rounder, right? First one, yeah. yeah. Good opportunity for Sean Noakes. What a card, though. Very good card oh, for all us to be on, and uh, I think it's awesome. Yeah, very good. I just realised I'm in the company of two men with a 100% KO rate. Yeah. Okay, the game. I've got faith in you. I've got a little bet on you, mate. Oh, we've Thanks, just seen man. a fist Appreciate bump, guy. I know we're uh, we're looking <laughs> at the stage, but just off stage there was a fist bump between Tommy Fletcher. And Sam Once Noakes. again, ladies and gentlemen, he's still competing tomorrow in a scheduled sixth round. I mean, fifth or sixth. Fifth or sixth, yeah. yeah. I think you cover up good, well for four. I'll you jab his head off. You think he'll yeah. get to him? Up sure. guts, mate. He's yeah. going to be ducking under. Yeah. I'm a short fire. All I'll do is diff. Up and down, up and down. Just make him eat an uppercut. Not the boys. That's Sean Noakes. Got brother Sam looking on. His first six rounder right, tomorrow night. Steve McManus to the steel compete tomorrow in his scheduled six round international. That's the worst bit for him over, that is. That's the worst bit. What will he do now? Are you, you, presumably you're with him, you're going to go off for a... Well, I've got, uh, I've got training later, so I'm going to drop him back home. All right. And then go back up to Bromley and do a bit of training. Lose, lose, lose some weight. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is a sleeper, this fight. I'm very intrigued by this fight. Umar Khan, the 5-0 prospect from Ilford, is taking on Sandeep Singh Bhatti. Now, Umar Khan is 5-0 with no knockouts. Sandeep Singh Bhatti is an absolute handful. We've seen him box Charles Frankham, give him a hell of a fight. Oh, was that the one that you Yes, ball? yes, and Isaac Lowe as well, last time at Spurs Stadium. And I asked Isaac Lowe, what did you think? And he said, he's a tough, well, expletive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to repeat it. <laughs> but uh, this is a tough guy, Sandeep Singh Bhatti. Yeah, that is an interesting fight. He's been in there with credible opponents, so, He just don't stop coming forward this one, does no, he? exactly. Umar brings a big crowd of him. I think he's got a great support. Well, here is the very well-supported Umar Khan, the cousin of Hamza Shiraz, unbeaten in five, just 20 years old. Biggest fight of his career, really. We've talked up Sandeep Singh Bhatti. Umar Khan's going to need to be at his very best. I spoke to Umar before the weigh and he told me he sells hundreds of tickets. You can tell like his support yeah. that he's got he's a, he's got a big fan base, very big fan base. 
which is very good for a young fighter to have. Of course, you have that as well, Tommy Fletcher. Your your nightmares from Norfolk and Sam. You've got the Maidstone Massive as well. <laughs> is that is that fair, Tommy, to call your fans the nightmares from Norfolk? Have you got the nightmares. Room? They're all bringing nightmares. Yeah, Trust me, Saturday. Just as bad at all. <laughs> I think they like the piss up more than anything. <laughs> Well, there is the face-off between Sandeep Singh Bhatti and Umar Khan. Tomorrow night at the OVO Arena, Wembley. How would you see this fight going, Dev? How is it going? Yeah, I think, I think this, this is a, a very intriguing fight for me. I think, Tommy, uh, we're going to swap you out. We're going to bring in a uh, little bro, a uh, big bro. Sure, notes. Come and have a chat. Oh, hello, mate. Come and have a chat. Sorry, sorry, mate, what's your name? Sean. Sean? No, that's you. That's, that's me. Right. What was your name? Sean. Sam. Sam. Sure. Nice um, to meet you, mate. First six rounder. Yeah, mate. How are you feeling? Sorry. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I'm thinking he's going to best in me in six rounds. Six to eight rounds would be good. Huh? He reckons you're going to get him out of there. What do you reckon? So I'll roll the punches. If I rush it, it might it won't happen. So I've just got to relax and it'll come. So just enjoy it, mate. That's all I can say to you, really. I ain't got a lot of advice. I don't really know me boxing, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, I'll be there shouting, mate. Don't worry about it. He said that he's bigger than you at the moment. Oh, he's like a stone heavier than me at the minute. Oh, we don't, don't talk, talk numbers, all right? Don't talk weight. I make so weight easy.